Well, good morning, everybody. John Grimsmo here, bringing you a Wednesday Grimsmo grind. Blade show. We leave for tomorrow. The we leave for Blade show tomorrow morning. Uh, super duper excited about that. Can't wait. And did you know that I'm not a knife collector? I've been in the knife game for five years, and the fanciest knife that I have that is not our own is a Benchmade 940 that I traded a Spyderco Paramilitary set of handles, actually, for. And the Benchmade 940 is like $200 knife, $150, I forget. Um, it's an okay knife, but it's a production knife. I don't have any custom knives. I feel kind of bad about that, but the fact is, I'm not a knife collector. When I have, you know, 600 to to $1,000, I don't look at the knife market and go, what am I going to get next? That's just me. Um, I know all my customers do, and that's great. Thank you guys so much for supporting. But me personally, I, I just don't drool over the next cool knife coming out because I would rather buy tools. And that's what I spend my money on. Um, it's not that I bank it. It's not that I shove it in my pocket and, you know, save it for a rainy day. I invest in the future. I invest in our company and I buy tools. And, you know, one way for me to get cool knives would be to trade with other knife makers. And I've probably got a dozen guys that I would trade with. But when it comes down to it, when I make a knife worth, let's say, $600 and we're going to trade or we're thinking about it. And then I think, wait a minute. I'm giving up $600 to get this other knife that I don't particularly need at this point in time. Uh, okay, I'd rather just sell it and put that money back into my business. So th those are the, the cruxes that I always come across. Every time I want to trade, I'm like, well, I could, I'd, I'd rather use that money, you know, wisely. Um, and there's many makers that I would love to support. I would love to give them full dollar for their knife so that I can support them and help them grow their business. But I'm just not at the point right now in my business where I'm, I, I can afford to do that, um, you know, without feeling super guilty or like I'm blowing money. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in this industry. I do love knives. I've loved them ever since I was 11 years old. But um, for me, it, being in this industry, it, it allows me to make a very intricate, very finely polished and finished and accurate product that is appreciated by the customer, both in value and in quality. Um, that's what I get out of this. And I, I actually love machines and machining more than the knives themselves, more than the knife industry itself. I'm more interested in the machining industry because I can apply that to make knives. Um, but I'm not so much into the machining industry that I want to be a job shop and just do machining all day. I don't care what it is. You know, I do care what I make. I, I really care what I make. Um, so I would be a terrible job shop because being someone who cares intimately about what I make, I would put every ounce of effort I have into other people's products. And that takes too much time. I, I can only afford to spend that much time on my own stuff, on the products that Eric and I make. Um, you know, I, every now and then I, I painstakingly agree to make parts for somebody else and I don't like to do it or help people deeply with a project, you know, where I'm putting in many hours of effort to help further them along. Um, and I always regret it. You know, I love to help and it's hard to say no, but in the end, I look back and I go, well, that was 12 hours that I could have spent on my business. You know, not to be greedy, but I, you gotta look out for number one sometimes. Um, as helpful as I like to be, when I'm spending 12 hours on somebody else's project and putting all my effort into it, and I could have done that to my business and furthered it along, then that's it's a tough call. So that's why I would be a terrible job shop. But, uh, you know, I, I love making knives. I love selling knives to our customers. I love furthering it, making it better constantly. Um, you know, I want our customers, the first time they buy a knife from us, I want them to be blown away. And then if they ever buy a knife from us again, I want them to be blown away again. And I want that constant 
progression of impressed impressiveness. Um, that's what I want, and I know what I want. So it's just interesting because we're going to Blade Show tomorrow. We're gonna spend the next, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday immersing ourselves in the knife industry. Uh, I know we're going to be meeting with established people, medium, like just getting off their feet kind of people, and then guys were just getting started, and I'm super excited to talk to everybody who is willing to spend their time to talk to me. Um, because it's an, it's an amazing industry. And I get to tie in the CNC machining side of things into the conversation, which is interesting to me as well. Um, but yeah, just the thought that there will be brand new knife makers there that nobody knows about. You know, I might be the first person that they show a knife to. Um, and that happened last year, and I know it'll happen this year. And it's kind of a big responsibility. It's like, what do I say to these people? You know, if it's great, I gotta tell them it's great. If it's crap, what do I tell them, you know? Obviously, I want to be constructive and helpful and tell them any tip that I can, but, you know, it's going to be amazing. I can't wait. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, ever since we started making our own knives, I carry um, our knives. I carry Norseman number one, Norseman number 200. Now I'm on Rask number one. Um, I want to make myself a new Norseman just because I'm greedy and I want a new one. But even still, I'm like, if I make a new one for me, it's going to be fancy. So it's going to be like $900 plus. I'd rather have that money. You know? <laughs> it's not just... I can't just make one and give it to a friend or give it to me or give it to Eric. That's money that we could be putting towards our business. Um, so I, I just have to be careful with that. Like, I think some people are kind of naive to the fact that, well, you can just make another one. Well, we could, but if we do, we could also sell it and make bank, uh, you know, instead of just squandering that money. It's not, you can't just look at the material value. It's the retail value. I mean, we have no problem selling these knives. So um, you have to look at the total cost, the total value of it. Anyway, I'm kind of rambling. Not quite sure exactly what direction I'm taking this in, but... Uh, but yeah, I, I want to have other people's knives. I want to have a Southern knife. Um, you know, I want to have a McGinnis knife. I, there's a lot of knives that I would love to have. I would love to have my own little collection that I can carry, um, you know, every day carry something different. That'd be really cool. And every knife maker has a different style and a different uh, feel and a different aesthetic. And I would love to experience that. There's some knives I want to own so that I can rip them apart and like see how the crap did they do this. So, I would love that, but I'm just not at the point where it makes sense right now. And I, I don't want it enough to give up cash or potential cash so that I can uh, have that feeling, you know. I'm okay going to these shows and seeing knives there and feeling them and like mentally cataloging all the information I need to take in instead of owning it because that's enough for me. And most of these knife makers, I have them on, on the phone anyway, so I can just call them up and if, if I have a specific question that they're an expert at. Um, so, so, yeah. I'm not much of a collector of things in general. I have a coin, a coin collection that I also started when I was maybe 11 or so. Like, this dude gave me a brick full of coins, and they're all cool coins from all around the world. He must have been collecting for a long time, but that kick-started my coin collection. Um, when I was a young kid, and, and I've just kind of kept it and throwing stuff in there ever since. Nothing, nothing fancy for the past probably 15 years, but um, yeah, I'm not much of a collector. I just don't, I don't know. I'd rather do stuff. I'd rather make things. I'd rather progress. So, anyway, um, today I'm making carbon fiber inlays, which we haven't done in like a year. So, I'm pretty excited to do that. Talk to you guys tomorrow on the way to Blade Show somehow. And uh, have a great day.
Bye.